fingers in the way. Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here, Peterson Electric. It is November 3rd of 2021. Um, we take on about one custom home a year. I haven't done a lot of videos this year for you because of COVID. I don't know about you guys, but we're still in Larimer County. It's our second year going into it, right, in February. So um, I've been trying to get in and out of homes a lot quicker and doing a little bit more bidding by text and phone and picture. Um, I've been doing this 24 years, so I'm pretty familiar with certain things. If you're watching us, I can give you a general ballpark. Um, but if, you know, customers aren't compliant to want to try to text pictures back and forth and do a little homework themselves, then, um, is what it is. So here's, uh, this is from my SEO guy. This is going to be, um, considered a transfer switch, manual transfer switch on a home. We do not do automatic transfer switches. You're looking for something that on the Western coast, uh, Colorado and Grand Junction would be more gen rack. Um, so you could keep in mind, but those are 15 to 20 grand plus pushing for your whole house to be done with that. Um, a couple things to keep in mind when you're outside, you do have to have a couple breaker switches available, search protective device, your grounding and whatnot. I'll show you as quick as I can on this. This is a brand new home. Uh, it's 45, 4,455 square foot. If I counted the outside eaves with all the Nora LED discs I've been wiring, it's probably more like a 5,000 square foot home for us. Biggest I've ever done. It's got 45 to 50 circuits in there. Um, anyways, a lot of people call me up about these simple transfer switches on Amazon. This is my su suggestion. You're going to have to have a full transfer switch that able to go auxiliary to twist lock and line. The weakest link about this is your 50 amp twist lock plug. So a 7200 watt generator should be somewhat adequate. Could go to a 10K. They do sell a 12K diesel, which is a Duramax. Um, but I would say just your, your typical Honda or Yamaha are very good. They make a lot of small equipment for ATV and, and um, jet skis and, and, and uh, generators, handheld and, and larger ones. A couple things to keep in mind, if you're gonna have it outside, you gotta keep it from the elements. It's gotta stay away, so you can't put it in your garage and, and smoke it out, right? But then some HOAs only have like 15, 20 foot, like my house, till you have your neighbor and they won't let you stick a doghouse on the side. If you could put a doghouse, put it in the doghouse and it vents properly with a vent on top, it, nobody's gonna steal it and then you're not worried about whether an element's on it. But you gotta keep in mind, otherwise you gotta roll it out and the only time you have problems is when there's a storm, right? So in here in Colorado, if it's March, it's deep snow. Um, but so keeping in mind with that, this is a good transfer switch. I like this, it's not cheap. If you're looking for your do-it-yourself dad little kit with six circuit spots, fine, that's up to you. But on newer homes from 2002 up to 2021, we have neutrals involved on the dwelling areas of where people live. And when you use some of those, it takes out the neutral. So you got to keep in mind, this is all about the neutral to make sure it's fed properly. What I like about this switch is, yes, the neutral does tie together and bond. And it goes out over here to a disconnect on that pole, which now we're no longer allowed to have two breakers out of that box, only one. And that transformer is grounded. So this is a good, I don't know, 40, 45 foot here. So to right here, up and into it, it's a good idea of what I'm showing you guys, that this goes straight into the transfer switch. And this transfer switch will go to auxiliary when power's dead and it no way if this back feeds can they hit each other with line and line okay so two basically two separately drive systems is what we call it in the code okay 200 amp main disconnect bolt on breaker 22k rated looked at that from my art my AIC fault current going that way then you're looking at your breakers that are stabbed Got some feeder going out future over here to go to a garage so I don't have to trench back into that area. Oops. So just to give you a quick view, come here, Alicia. This has been staying in an RV here for about three weeks to get this house done. We had a ton of underground. We did well, septic, temp, primary power, and then an RV plug. So five different trenches we had to deal with. And it, winter is hitting us very quickly as the ground is muddy. We just wrapped up today. So this is the outside of the house. Okay, I designed my own circuitry on it. They had some generic architect, which was really lame, no offense. But um, I designed all the wiring myself. 
made sure I had enough circuit spaces, more available, 200 amp service. I did still drive two ground rods. You can't see it because look how the wind took down the tie back. I got a ground here for the generator. Okay. I still put in my two eight foot ground rods because the code does say 250, 52, and 53. If there's anything present available, you're supposed to do it. So Ufer is not the only one. So are you for some gal asked me the other day what a Ufer was. She was out of state. I just said, watch a video. I talk about them all the time. But here it is all the way down in the footer. There's my peak hole for it if they decide to drywall. That, that switch, that transfer switch, only goes to this panel. And then we have four one-inch conduits I labeled that we did under slab. Do you see this whole entire house? It's all on slab. The other panel is a sub-panel for 125 amp here that is non-emergency. So if you have a house that you need to identify certain circuits, we have to trace the house. And let's say it does go in overhead, you have to have four wires feeding that panel. If it's three, you gotta replace the, that sub-feeder. Then you nipple to it, next to it, and then you put in the circuits that are only for that panel to be served by the transfer switch. But this idea of people using red and green and yellow stickers, so, hey, honey, you remember this on the phone when I'm out of town? That's not how you do it. That's how you end up dead or burning your home down or wrecking your utility transformer or all of the above. So keep in mind, you got to have a way to completely lock it out. And any other questions beyond that on Amazon because people want to text me a picture or look at a link, I, you know, if we're working for someone to do the work, that's different. We will walk them through the steps, but I'm not going to tell people this and that when I've seen so many little kits on Amazon online. You know, if you have an old home and you want to experiment and your electrical engineer, have at it. But other than that, the last thing I want to do is have a generator here and then power kick back on and you don't know when that is with utilities and you got an issue. Anyways, walking through here, here's the garage. We had 360 openings in this house. And um, that was about 60 openings in the panel. So about 425 areas to splice. It was a big home for us. Um, so this is how I stubbed in underground, in and out. We lucked out getting in the wall perfect there. Okay, and then we go over to our well pump circuits. I'm waiting for my circ pumps to get in. But these circuits here are emergency. So when the trans transfer switch kicks on, the furnace kicks on because they have a furnace coming in, and the well, okay? And also the gas boiler for the tank of water here. And come on this way. So we had like the master bedroom here, so we had an emergency circuit, the office, and the living room. We like to try to test everything before the walls go up. By the way, they are foaming all of the exterior walls. If you want to know what foam is, it's right there. Very expensive. But I tell you, it's like solid. It really helps the structure. Out here, they get 50 mile an hour winds minimum. Um, so anyways, PVC stuff up there, not mechanical. This was a huge, gigantic island. So I tried to be very narrow on stubbing up, but I had two kitchen counter plugs. I had a, two dishwashers and a disposal. And then I fed through the wall to get over to here to get my refrigerator and my microwave on the emergency circuit with a couple kitchen counter plugs. So in this area, these are emergency. If power goes off, at least she can cook, hit the disposal, use the dishwasher, use the microwave, hot pocket this, do that, and do the refrigerator. But other than that, we had to kind of narrow because we only have a certain amount of circuits. I mean, you could fill up a 42 circuit panel, that's fine. But you gotta remember that your generator is gonna start making funky noises if it's off balance on lake to lake. And on top of it, you gotta make sure your loads aren't too heavy. Well, thank God we're in the LED world because all my light bulbs in here are like 14 watts of bulb on some of my Nora trims, so I don't have to worry about that. But we did wire one circuit that did all of this. So we did our, a four-way system back here, here, to the owner walking out of the master and then over there to someone walking in the front door. So you've got a five-way system going. And we have one emergency circuit for that. Here's another really hard thing I had to deal with. The cabinet guys, oh man, those guys just wanna drive me nuts, man. They act like that their trade is so more specific than ours. 
I know it's wood and glue and specialty and, and saws and cutting and blah, blah, blah. I get it. That's a very custom trade, but they don't have inspectors that look at their stuff. We do. So what, did, what happened to the architect? I'd like to shoot this architect. He shortened the windows, right, to raise the counter, and I couldn't get my plugs in. All I can fit is a backsplash. So the coach says that no matter what, I've got to have my counter outlets. So now we're doing pop-up outlets that they're drilling their quartz counter with a four inch hole and they're shortening their drawers. Plus we lost the dishwasher on the right side because you can't do a plug within two foot to the edge of the sink. And this is a short garden sink, not even a big sink. Normally the big sinks here and the gardens over here, they did the opposite. So I told them within 24 inches of that sink edge, I drew out every cabinet thing here. The cabinet guy came and said, oh, who drew that all out? I did, it took me three hours. And it was really cold that day. But the bottom line is, is that I know all my exact measurements. So I know my gas range is hitting, my electric part of a range, range if they did a hybrid. I've got my rope lighting up above. I've got my under cabinet LED tape lighting right here. I got my plugs over the counter. This counted as four foot thereafter because I hit my first my two, my first one to pop up. So we'll pull out the drawer, come in here, wire this, flex it, put it in, use a pop up plug. And then guess what? We couldn't get through all of this in LVL. So we're not allowed to drill it. So we had to put flex. So the cabinet guy is really going to bitch me out later when he comes in, he has to round off the edge of his cabinets to slide them. Because what's going on here is they're putting it on cement because they have under floor heating and they can't drill anything. And then they're gonna put in a floating wood floor all the way across. So looking at how all this is, we pulled about with the septic well and four raceways of one inch, we pulled about 4,500 feet of THWN-2, 14, 12, and 10 gauge underground. That's three quarter of a mile. And then in here we did 3,000 feet of 14.2, 1,500 feet of 14.3, 1,000 foot of 12.2, 500 foot of 12.4, and 250 to four, 500 feet, two rolls of 14.4, because that's how we run our home runs. So coming in here, this is a, I showed my wife and my kids the first time, this is basically a four-way box here, right? And it's jumping around, but the power and switch light come out of here, so everywhere I went was a dead-end circuit. It still worked as a good three-way or four-way, but it dead-ended with only three wires. Because the reason why we do that is walls like this. Those architects just love just assuming electricians don't have to get me code. So all of this wood, so we literally had to just drill everything and put as minimal circuits as we could coming up. In fact, I put the doorbell transformer there just so it's closer to the door so I don't have to deal with going to the furnace. Code doesn't care about that, neither does my inspector. And so we've got these nice Arlington boxes that are flat, that work for ceiling fan, a dining sink, an entry light that need to be flat as they come into an A-frame. We have outside uh, eaves that are newer trims walking in here. The only thing I don't understand about this house is they think have the shortest doors I've ever seen in my life. I'm five nine, and all the walls are super high. So anyways, coming in here, the last two PVC boxes, we came into this area. These were essential circuits. These were non-essential. Coming up here, tied it together. We did watch our box fill. I did use four and 11 16 boxes with the one inch knockouts that made it easier. And then in here, you've got a bedroom, bedroom, Jack and Jill bath, bedroom, bedroom, Jack and Jill bath. This living room area is on emergency. If the power goes up, kids can play and sit right there and that wall stays hot. These lights are hot, all the rest of it dies. Smoke detectors are on an arc fault, but also on the emergency backup as well. This is probably one of the hardest houses that I've ever planned in 24 years I've been in the trade. So, but I love doing this type of work. I've loved the challenge. I like being on the cement. We did good with our underground pop-up stubs. It was just a challenge trying to fight the cabinet guys. One thing that we needed was a couple extra doors right here. They just wanted to put cabinets here. And then I'm like, well, where are we putting all this stuff? And they're like, well, that's your problem. Uh-uh. The owner likes me. And they said, no, you're going to put cabinets here. I have a door open so the plumber can cut down. I don't know why he didn't put his stuff closer together there or there. Because you can see the cabinet line. That's going to cause an issue with this one right there. Um, all of its two by six exterior walls, which was helpful for us. Um, they are foam in all the walls. So... 
again, all the electric has to be looked at by Jim Rosenbaum, I think is his name out in Weld County, before they decide to foam, they have to get electrical inspected because he will fail me if it's not. Um, anyways, oh, stacks. I use 32 bags at $25, 25 a bag. It's 750 stacks in this house, 48 cents a stack. So you do the math. We did a lot of tie straps to keep things together because I like stacks, but they just kind of get loose as you pull in and cut in. I hate that. So I have my kids do help me with that. Um, exhaust fans, again, you have to have laundry, bathroom and bathroom, whatnot. Um, videos get kind of long. So guys, uh, thanks for joining us. And um, hopefully if you have any questions, you can figure it out. Thanks.